Mountain biking can seem quite complicated. There's plenty of things to learn. Here are some of the things I wish I'd known when I started mountain biking. How much a bit of simple bike maintenance matters. From just being able to check your bolt so something doesn't fall off and cause an accident, to actually keeping an eye on your tire pressure or lubing your chain. It's all pretty easy, but it makes a big difference to how well your bike rides. At the bare minimum after a ride, especially a muddy one, I will wash my bike off, dry the chain out with a dirty rag, give it a lube, and then just check some of the common bolts that do come undone. Things like your axles, your rear mech. Oh, shit! And then when I get my bike out of the car for the next ride, I'll give my tires a quick squeeze to make sure they haven't lost any pressure, give my bike a visual check over, and away I go. The bike then should not let me down. Hopefully nothing's gonna fall off, no mechanical problems, and it cause me any issues. How much your tire pressure affects the ride of your bike? Now I would say there's definitely like an operating window where, yes, it'll be better in different conditions, but it's all usable, somewhere from say 20 PSI to 30 PSI. But if you go outside of that area, lower or higher, then it can definitely cause you problems. Too low a tire pressure, you might puncture or it might get worse now. You start rolling tires, and if you make a mistake, say on the front wheel, start rolling a tire, that can then grab and cause a crash. Also, go too hard with those tires, you're just not gonna get any bite into the ground. I think the most common problem here is people not checking their tires often enough, and they may lose a bit of pressure if they're tubeless, or even with tubes, they can go down over a while. So make sure you're not riding with tires that are too soft. The mountain bike trails don't just pop up. They take a lot of work to build and maintain. So if you're new to riding, why not try and find the local mountain bike group or club, speak to your local shop, and try and get involved, go out and help maintain trails, build them. It's great for learning what goes into it, but also where you can and can't ride. So adjusting your rear mech to work properly is actually pretty simple. Now I've got friends who've ridden bikes for 20 years and still don't know how to do this, so you should learn it. Uh, it's all about getting the right cable tension. Yes, there are some more complicated things like setting the limit screws so you don't push that derailleur cage into your spokes or get a chain jam down here. And B tension does complicate things a little bit, but actually indexing your gear is all about getting the right tension on the cable down here and then doing the fine adjustments on the barrel up at your shifter. If your chain is a little bit slow going to the lower gear, so up the cassette, then just add a bit more tension. So screw that barrel adjuster anti-clockwise to pull that outer cable out a little bit, more tension on the inner cable, boom. Or if your chain's slow going the other way, then do the opposite. Pretty easy, isn't it? The only thing that could affect that is if your cable has a bit of friction in there, so check that as well. that chamois are a good thing. And I'm not just talking about the ones that you dry your car off with, I'm talking about padded shorts, the ones that roadies wear. I wear them pretty much every single time I ride. It makes riding so much more comfortable. I don't know why anyone would go without. Henry, bulletproof ass Quinny, rode for 14 hours doing his Everesting without running a set of chamois shorts. Um, so not everyone agrees with me, but I think he's mental. Fitness is quite important. Uh, now, hopefully you're gonna get fitter when you start riding more and more, but actually I think fitness is one of the big things that's gonna help you enjoy riding more. If you're not fit from a different sport, coming and starting mountain biking can be painful, uncomfortable, and not that much fun. So when you really start to get those fitness improvement gains, your enjoyment of riding is also really gonna get better. You don't need to pack the kitchen sink. Well, some mountain bikers do like to be prepared for every eventuality. I like to base what I take on the type of ride I'm doing. So how far am I wandering away from where my car is or a point of help? And then I can base what I take with me on that. If it's gonna take me an hour to hike back to my car, then I'll definitely take a tube and a pump or something to fix my chain. If I know that I'm just doing laps on my local wood and it's a 20 minute walk, then sometimes I'll just take a drink of water and that's it. How many excuses you're gonna hear? Now, this is human nature and I do it, of course, but some people will always blame their kit or their bike or not having the latest and greatest suspension fork for not being as fast or as good or going riding as much. Yes, having the latest, greatest kit is very, very nice and I'm very lucky, but try not to let not having that stuff ruin your ride or 
turn you into someone that makes excuses like, I can't ride down that section because my brakes don't work or my skills aren't quite up to it. Let's try and make mountain biking a much more positive experience and stop making excuses. Let us know in the comments down below if there's something that you discovered after you started riding that you wish you knew before you started riding. And if you want some inspiration to take your riding to the next level, click up there for how to adventure more from our Adventure Week content. And down there for some essential skills when you start learning to ride a bike. Give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button.